my name's Kat Jones. I am 46, although I keep losing count. And I was born in Cambridge. I love this format. The thing is that I'm really crap at like a press interview. I'm really good at a personal like chat. Stop Climate Chaos Scotland. I'm their COP26 project manager. I have been a member of a political party in the past, but I'm not at the moment. I moved here in 1997 um, to do my PhD and I came from England. I lived all my life in England and I'd only ever visited Scotland once. Um, and I came to Scotland and immediately I thought, gosh, this is a proper country all of its own. This is just a completely different place to what I'm used to. And I actually had a little kind of moment of culture shock when I was like, gosh, this isn't how I'd thought of things were. But I mean, I was only, perhaps I was 20 three or so and um you know I've been here ever since but that was sort of when I really felt like gosh you know this is a this is a country all of its own so I think I'd only been to Scotland once and that's when after my A levels I think I took a train a sleeper train with a friend on a big adventure and we got the train to Glasgow and then I suppose we must have got the train out to Oban the bus to Mull and Iona and we spent a few days on Iona camping in a tent and you know aged 18 that was just a fantastic adventure for us and I remember waking up on the sleeper on oh, on Rannoch Moor was it? It's shy being Scottish! I can't remember where where we got the sleeper to but I just remember waking up in the middle of nowhere going this is amazing you can get on a train in like busy London and and the next thing you know, you're in this amazing, beautiful landscape. So that was my first experience. And then moving to Glasgow when I was about 22. Well, I suppose relatively good. I mean, I've got a family, I've got two teenagers, and it's been a fortunate time for us because I've had the opportunity to spend time with my teenage kids. He's become a teenager. <laughs> that I'd have never had before because, you know, before COVID, they're pretty much out all the time, never saw them. We pretty much felt like they'd left home. Um, they're 16 now and 18. Um, but, you know, during lockdown, we've kind of got, grown really close as a family, spent loads of time together and find that we actually get on, which was quite a surprise to me. It's been amazing, actually. And even, like, I love walking. I love the outdoors. And my children have always rebelled against that, I think, because they were dragged out to for walks up hills, you know, from the age of zero. And as soon as they were old enough, they stopped coming. But there's been nothing to do but to go for walks together. So we've been for nice walks, you know, around parks in town, obviously, but also, you know, within the five mile limit of Glasgow, we've got the Kilpatricks, we've got the, the campuses and Mugged at Country Park and like all sorts of lovely places, Cathic and Brays. And I've taken uh, the teenagers on many a, many a stroll and it's, it's really been a blessing, I think. It's just a glass of water because we're having this uh, at 14.10, I can see from my clock. Uh, if it was something else, it would be a gin and tonic. If it was at, if we were having this conversation at seven at night, I'd be having a gin and tonic. I know from going to Scandinavia that they sort of manage their alcohol, their relationship with alcohol a bit differently to us, you know, that they do have, you can only get your wine at certain shops. And, you know, you, when I was uh, on my year out, I went out to Svalbard and there you had a token you got when you flew in and you could only have as many drinks as you had in your token. Um, so they're very strict about that. And I have to say that I have tendencies towards a bit more libertarian sort of a view on this and feel like, you know, you should be able to manage your own intake. But um, yeah, I kind of don't have much to say about that, but that I do enjoy a glass of wine or a gin and tonic perhaps. Mm. Too much, but four times. I might have four times a week, three, three or four times a week. Well, I will drink a whiskey if it's in company, um, you know, in a special kind of company, you know, not not just like family at home. If it's like friends around a fire, a guitar has to be present and that kind of thing. I'm married to a Swiss. And so, of course, as soon as that happened, uh, my whole life became really quite stressful with the thought of what was going to happen, were they going to, like ex, you know, repatriate Rudy to his home country or something. And um, in fact, the day that the, the Brexit um, vote happened, I was in town. I went to Glasgow to take my daughter to an orthodontist or something appointment. And um, there was somebody looking at a map and I can't, I'm just like any other Glaswegian, I, um, even though I don't sound like one, I am like a Glaswegian. I can't pass by a man with a map 
without saying, oh, do you need some help? Do you need to get somewhere? And, and he said, uh, he, had to, he was from Germany, him and his wife, they're in their 60s, 70s perhaps, and they'd come from Germany. And he was looking for the Corinthian. I was like, well, why do you want to go to the Corinthian? He was like, oh, we've been told it's really good for lunch. I was like, oh, no. You don't want to go to the Corinthian. No, no, no. So I gave him a list of all the different places that he ought to go for his lunch and, and where he should take his holiday. And I, I got his guidebook out and I was showing him all the spots, all the highlights. And he was looking for a place for his son to have a, uh, a birthday, a birthday party um, that evening because he's coming in for a special like birthday kind of celebration. Um, and so I said, you must go to the chip. If you've got, if you've got the money to spend, that's where you would take your son for a very, very special birthday. Um, in Glasgow so I sent him off to the chip anyway later then he said to me oh so what about what do you think about this Brexit thing then and then I just burst out crying I literally started sobbing couldn't really speak and my daughter just dragged me off she just grabbed my arm she was like mum come with me pull yourself together she dragged me to the nearest coffee shop and she was like get in there and get a coffee and just calm down and so I was like okay okay so I went and got my coffee um, and when I went to pay, I realized I had his map in one hand and his guidebook in the other hand. And I just was like, oh, my gosh, this poor man. He's come all the way from Germany for his holidays. We voted them out of our kind of club. And then we've we, I've nicked their, their map, his map. And, his, and his, so I, I thought, what am I going to do? So the first thing I did, I went to the Corinthian um, to see if it had shown up there. He hadn't which was good because it obviously taken my advice. And not to say there's anything wrong with it. It's just, I don't know. I don't know. I, I wouldn't go there myself. And um, so then, then I thought, oh no, I'll have to go to the chip. So then I got the underground out of the town, went, got out at Hillhead, went to the chip, and I went in and I said, look, there's a guy who might come in here and book a book to, to visit um, this evening. Could you pass these on to him? And they said, oh, he's already booked. He's already phoned through. He's booked a place and, and he'll be here. So I left him, left him, left my email address, and he sent me a thank you email. So thanks very much for getting my book back. <laughs> <laughs>